Hello and welcome to yet another video focusing on Spelljammer. This video will just be exploring my main Spelljammer homebrew setting I've developed for my own games. By the time the following video goes up, I should have the map and PDF and materials I made for this video up with a really basic outline of the setting up on the DMs Guild. So if you want to read along or want any of the things to steal for your own games, it will be available for you soon. A very quick note, for my homebrew games, my various peoples, dwarves, elves, gith, gif, often take on very different attitudes, behaviors, etc., depending on their circumstances, their goals, desires, who they feel threatened by, or who they think they can trust. So if you look at my gith and immediately think, but they're not like that in the books, yeah, yeah sorry. As a DM, I will take your favorites and ruin them and make them my own. And very often my peoples will vary greatly from homebrew setting to homebrew setting. Sometimes they'll be the same, sometimes they won't, but enough rambling. If my voice isn't sounding too clear, that is because I'm currently recording this while competing with the generator engine running right outside my window. So yeah, sorry about that. A quick note, this video is sponsored by nobody because I suck and you should kill me. If you feel so kind and generous and lovely and squishy, please leave a like, subscribe, and share my video. If you are extra magnanimous today, please throw money at my face. These details and links are below in the doobly-doo. So, story time with Shawl. Here is my weird little crystal sphere that I like to set my players up in. It doesn't have to be the central plot of the entire campaign. It doesn't even have to provide the players with a problem they could or would want to solve. It merely creates a backdrop of a world in which the players can become familiar with a Spelljammer setting. So let's have a look at Corand and Liss, a comedy of errors. In a far-off sphere, there are two stars that orbit each other, Corand and Liss. There are no planets here except for the ruined remnants of planets that ring the stars as six belts, each ruled over by a prince. Many civilizations have come to the sphere to settle, trade, war, or steal, but the most powerful person among these is the Vescovo. Their identity is not known, but their word is final, and no prince or pirate has dared to challenge the Vescovo. Why the Vescovo has so much power is unknown except to the princes, who have not disclosed their knowledge. A sphere-wide battle broke out for the great jewel of power known as the Codex. It contained knowledge and power that would allow its wielder not only the ability to rule over Corand and Lys, but over many other spheres as well. So the Codex was brought to the Vescovo by the six princes. The first prince was Nisilla, the elven prince, of the first belt known as Vonimir. Her belt was made of asteroids burnt and molten due to their proximity to the stars. The second prince was Estel, the Gith prince, of the second belt known as Dust. His belt was a windy cyclone that housed very few enclaves, and it is very dangerous for any travelers to pass through. Most vessels sail far above and below the storm. The third prince was Cassander, the gnome prince of the third belt, known as Ard. His belt is a verdant ring of rock and root and plant, where the vast majority of the sphere's population lives. The fourth prince was Julian the Gif, prince of the fourth belt known as Borson. His belt is a rocky and metal and mineral-filled series of mines and forges. The fifth prince was Elsebet the human prince of the fifth belt known as Dovasis. Her belt is a ring of water, on which a few islands and moats of floating earth can be found. There are many pirates here, and many believe Elsebet is not only their prince, but their queen, and possibly a vampire as well. The sixth prince was Naplan the Claw, the dragon prince of the sixth belt known as Talon. Naplan and his crew of lawful good dragonborn soldiers are the law of the sphere, and they patrol to keep the peace and fight pirates and do whatever the Vescovo orders them to do. The Vescovo's palace and cathedral, the Mithril Halls, float on a rock that orbits erratically around the sphere in a pattern that seems to repeat every 12 years. It is to this place where the princes brought the Codex. The Vescovo spent a week in contemplation and prayer over which belt should be given the Codex. 
As he gathered the princes before thousands of adoring spectators at the end of that week, he pronounced, My children, I have come to a decision that the people who should be given the codex are the guild. And as soon as the words are spoken, a shot rings out. The Vescovo dies, dropping the codex onto the ground where it breaks in two. The Vescovo's body disappears. Panic erupts as people begin to shout and flee and fight. Estel, the Gith Prince of Dust, and Julian, the Gith Prince of Borson, both believing that they were the chosen of the Vescovo, lunge towards the Codex, each grabbing half. In the tumult, they manage to escape the Mithril Halls with their respective pieces of the Codex. A great war breaks out as the Gith and the Gif both demand that each relinquish their respective halves of the Codex, as each half is useless without the other. Ten years pass, and the sphere settles into a disquiet cold war as Naplin the Claw tries to keep the peace as best he can. It is believed that Nasilla of Onimir provides aid to both sides of the conflict, waiting to see what the outcome of the war will be, having ambitions of her own. Carsander of Ard desperately fights to keep the peace between his neighboring belts, waging their cold war with him stuck between them. Elsabet has managed to corral all the sphere's pirates together under her banner, and her belt is thriving most of all. The players find themselves stranded on a beach island on Vonimir, ten years after the breaking of the Codex. A wrecked spelljammer is dashed upon the rocks, just seaward of where they awoke. A distant ship flying a red sail is spotted travelling towards them over the edge of the belt. What will they do next? If you've made it this far, thank you for listening to my story. I hope you enjoyed it, and if nothing else, it sparked some creative inspiration in you. In the next video, I want to talk about setting snippets like this and how I use them to create a foundation for my campaigns. I mean, you don't even have to use the story in space. You could just have six countries coming to the Vescovo's palace that is situated somewhere among these countries. But more on that in the following video. Thank you for joining me. Please leave a like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. If you want to throw money at my face, the links are below. You folks have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and take care of one another. All my love.